Fabrizio Obelmahias. And that bout is coming up uh, in a moment. Marvin, how difficult was it for you to prepare for Obelmahias, a guy that you had already beaten that was in Boston back in January of 81? You stopped him in round eight. Well, I'm, I'm very glad that I trained very hard for him. Uh, I was, was trying to put a strategy together, trying to figure out what would he do different in this fight. And the only alternative that we've seen was that by him trying to outbox me. And you know, I'm just as great as a boxer as they say I'm a slugger, boxer puncher. So uh, I think that our strategy worked very good. Uh, after two rounds or so, I took his legs away from him and uh, made him fight. And I figured he would come back into his old strategy. Uh, Marv, how hard was it to get up for a fight at 3 o'clock in the morning? I know we took Ali over to Africa, and we had a terrible time getting him to sleep during the day so he would be fresh. Did you have that trouble? Yes, that's the toughest thing, but everything was an experience to me, something new in my boxing career, and I'm, I'm glad that's all over. <laughs> you don't want to fight at 3 in the morning? <laughs> Not anymore. at 3 in the morning. Maybe we'll cancel the Africa fight. Yeah. Oh, jeez, <laughs> I don't know right, what we'll Ali be, went through. We'll be talking more with uh, marvelous Marvin Hagler after we take a look at what took place in the ring in San Remo last Last week as Marvin gets a first look at the bout. Fulgencio Obel Mejias, 38 and 1, 36 by knockout. Most of his fights have taken place in Caracas, Venezuela, and Mexico. His last bout, August the 2nd, eighth round knockout of Willie Torres. Marvin Hagler in his last fight, last March, knocked out Keith Van Lee in a 67-second blowout. So this is first bout since then. He fractured a ribbon training this past June. Hagler's not, not had the greatest amount of luck uh, business-wise in his career because just when he is on track as a great champion, uh, cracking up to be a great champion, everything happens to him. He cracks the rib, fights fall through. Now he's got to fight Obil Mejia's first before he gets to the big money shots. So uh, Hagler's anxious to get started. He, he wants action. He wants to fight every three or four months. He wants to get to the big paydays he thinks has been uh, have been eluding him, and they have. Hagler was bothered by Obel Mejia's attitude toward him at the weigh-in. Obel Mejia's making excuses about that previous meeting and claiming that he will get Hagler this time. This is round one. Oh boy, I mean, he is much uh, taller. It didn't help him last time with a greater reach. Last time he was not able to follow the Hagler style. Well, that's good action by Ovo Mejias, who's certainly not showing a great deal of respect for Hagler right off the bat. Obel Mejias fought Hagler for the title back in January 1981 in Boston. Knocked out in the eighth round. Since then, he's won 10 straight all by knockout, but impossible to get a feel for the quality of his opponents. That's a difficulty that the World Boxing Organizations run into. You get these guys that fight just in their hometown in South America, in Korea, or in Japan, and they become uh, rated on the basis of 31 and 0, 40 and 0, but you don't know what their opponents are like. They come over, they face a haggler, and they're wiped out as they were last time. Now, how does that entitle them to a title match? I don't know. And just under a minute left in this first round. For example, would you have felt much better, Marv, if you've seen him fight Animal Fletcher or Green or one of the uh, contenders, Mustafa Ham show? If he could beat them, then he deserves a title shot with Hagler. And for Marvin Hagler, it will be most interesting to observe, and he will be on hand for the Sugar Ray Leonard announcement next Tuesday to see what lies in the future of Leonard. The other possibilities for Hagler are Tony Simpson and Frank the Animal Flesh. Low blow by Obo Mejia's. Obo Mejia's winning this round by surprise. Uh, certainly Hagler didn't steam out to put him away like uh, people thought he would. Strictly feeling out first round for the champion, Marvin Hagler. And this is round two. Marvin Hagler defending his middleweight title for the fourth time. He won it with a fifth round knockout of Alan Minter in London in September of 1980. Very quiet setting here. In San Remo, Italy on the Italian Riviera. And this is uh, the stage of a movie theater in downtown San Remo, the Adestad Theater. It's almost like a tennis crowd. Oh, oh slipped by over here. Slipped on some water. The crowd
that is curiously quiet. Another thing did you notice, look at the ringside seats there. It's almost at the same level with the ring. The ring is not up four or five feet the way it usually is three or four feet, but they are almost on the same level. You can see the people standing. It almost feels like you're in a gym someplace just watching a fight. You see right off the bat, uh, Bob Arum and his lovely wife Sybil sitting ringside, the promoter that promoted this fight. And a minute gone by in the second round. Hagler 55 and 2 with two draws. Began his professional career back in 1973. 46 of the 55 wins by knockout and only recently beginning to get his due. Almost late in his career, but he can certainly uh, make gold while the sun shines for the next two years because he's got great opponents lined up. Vicky next has to fight Simpson and in a mandatory Tony Simpson from England and then follow it with Animal Fletcher if they can make that fight come true. Left hand by Hagler. It has been not action the first couple of rounds. Now over the heel is able to land to the butt and to the head. Going with the uppercut. And then hooking after the uppercut. That's been his plan. Hagler absolutely unmoved. Hagler had trained with great enthusiasm for this fight. First at the Cape Cod. And the last 10 days here in San Remo, he had nine different sparring partners for the fight. Obo Mejia has taken this second round as well. Based on his aggressive, aggressiveness and the way he's landing his punches right on the mark. The uppercut working for him. Hagler seems very unruffled by it all. That southpaw style of Hagler, very difficult to face. And Hagler coming alive as we go final seconds. Round two. <laughs> and this is round three. Marvelous Marvin Hagler, WBC and WBA middleweight champion. And Fulgencio Obo Mejias. His corner said, take everything calmly. You've taken the first two rounds. Keep boxing. He said, he looks like you're a little tied up. And he said, I feel cold. I don't know what that could mean. He took the first two rounds and he looks like he's warming up. Right. Obo Mejia says he was not in proper condition the last time that he fought Hagler says he was suffering from a bad hand and a severe head cold you know I just don't believe those things I, oh, I've been around boxing all, for 20 years when a guy loses he's got the greatest collection of excuses I, oh, I once just made a book of excuses when you lose when you win no, you can win with a broken hand with pneumonia if you win you never mention it slight drizzle uh, from the nose and you've got uh, big excuses. Well, the Boston climate through, right? Yeah, the Boston climate in the left hand of uh, Hagler through. Also, when a boxer loses by decision, it's always a controversial decision. <laughs> It's the hardest thing to teach a boxer, not to complain about losses, not to look for excuses, just to say, well, that was not my day, and mine's coming. Combination by Hagler, but Ola Mejias has won the first uh, two rounds. He has. Hagler has not really revealed the marvelous Marvin technique that we've seen so far. There's the left hand getting in on Ola Mejias. Now he's starting to punch a lot harder. Look at the zip in Marvin's punches now. Ola Mejias... Uh, his back on Hagler nearly tossed. I think I think he just noticed that there was a different Hagler in front of him. He just got two zipping punches instead of uh, the usual pity patting that Hagler was doing through the first uh, two rounds. He said to himself, uh-oh, this is how I remember it last time. It wasn't too nice. Now Marvin's starting to really chase. And we're less than a minute left in this third round. Marv Albert and the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. Hackler and Obel Mejias meeting in San Remo, Italy. I'd still like to see Obel Mejias come over here and fight the, the regular top 10 middleweights and see how he would do. Because right now, he's starting to get taken to the cleaners by Hagler. Hagler's just starting to fight the range, and he's just starting to put in real bombs. Both fighters, incidentally, have been hitting low throughout the fight, and the Mexican referee has not 
comment on it, either one, one way or the other. Combinations by Oba Mejias, but just grazing Hagler, they have had no effect. Well, Gainsio Oba Mejias out of Caracas, Venezuela, taking a second shot at the champion, Marvin Hagler. Final seconds, round three. And this is round four, scoring on the 10-point plus the referee Ernesto Magana out of Mexico City. Oval Mejias making the first two rounds. Angler coming back in round three and now beginning to look sharp. This is beginning to look like he's into it now. He, before it was just sort of feeling him out. Oh, left hand by Hagler. Obel Mejia says, wasn't anything, wasn't anything, but it was right on the button. The right hook of Hagler is his most devastating punch. We have not seen any signs of it to this point. It looks to me like it's going to be the year of Hagler coming up. The opponents are really good now. First-rate opponents, each fight is meaningful, and there's a crop coming up of five middleweights at least that I can think of off the top of my head who a year down the road will furnish magnificent opposition for Hagler. Hagler looks like he's got his future cut out for him if he can win each fight. And it is Hagler now on the attack. He has Oba Mejias backing away. Right hand by Oba Mejias getting in, and here's Hagler right back. A nice uppercut to the body. Oba Mejias is putting in a nice hook to the head by Oba Mejias, but he doesn't look like he's willing to stand and fight with, uh, with Hagler. It looks like he's given ground a little too eagerly. And we are midway, round four. Hagler is the type of fighter that if he senses there's a little fear or a little trepidation, if he senses that the, that the uh, flow is going his way, he really takes advantage. He comes on like a bad flood. He just goes right over you. Certainly he's fighting with a lot more enthusiasm right now. He looks like he's coming on much Oh, Good hook by Hagler. The fighter has been cut, no knockdown. Under a minute left of this fourth round as Hagler defends for the fourth time and doubling up on that left hook. And they have hurt over the hiss. Look at all the low blows here. Now you can see why Obo Mejia is just not anxious to stand and trade with him. But then in close, Hagler is devastated. Look at those hooks that Hagler puts in there. Yes, marvelous Marvin going to work in this fourth round, landing with combinations. 15 seconds remaining in the round. Best action of the bout. Another solid round for the champion, Marvin Hagler. Along with co-managers Pat and Goody Petronelli, Marvin, quick impression. Anything look different to you? Well, I thought it was a very aggressive and, a, and more harder punches thrown in this fight than what it was the first time. As you look at it. As I'm looking at it. On tape. But it still was a very good fight. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I thought you might say that. Yeah. All right, we'll be back with more round five. And this is round five. Oba Mejias taking the first two rounds of the bout, but Hagler the last two, and Hagler looking very confident. Combination by Hagler, and he has Oba Mejias just backing away, wants no part of him. Oba Mejias very tentative now, almost a lot of trepidation in his moves. He's, he's uh, making the moves of a guy that's getting hit hard and doesn't want it anymore. He's moving back real fast. Trying to tie Marvin up. Hagler coming on with his style. That style that says, if you're the least bit scared of me, I'm going to eat you up. Whoa, what a punch. That's the kind of tear shoulder muscles when you uh, miss that kind of a sweeping hook by Marvin Hagler. Minute gone by in round five, but 
again, pretty series of low blows this time thrown by Hackett. Marvin has really come in with the low blows. Opponent's very tall. He wears his trunks high, but they've both been doing that. Left hook by Oval Mejias. He's got to throw something or else Marvin will just run him right out of San Remo. If he doesn't throw something, he's Marvin will run him right out of the auditorium. Break, break. No, no agarre, Oval. Fuera, break. Stop. And a rare break. Ernesto Maganga, the referee, who has had uh, very little to do, will seem to ignore some of the low blows earlier in the bout. I wonder what it feels like to have Marvin Hagler's head put in your face. It must feel like a grapefruit rubbing up there. <laughs> Going to the body effectively under a minute left in this fifth round. Uppercut Hagler. Well, Fogo, Ogo better get off those ropes. Watch your head. Watch your head, says Maganya to Hagler. Finally. Right hand by Hagler. Another right. Combination by Hagler. And down goes over the hiss. In command throughout the fifth round, he took over the fight in round three, and over the hiss, not able to get up. That's it. And Hagler has successfully defended his middleweight title with a fifth round knockout of Fulgencio Oval Mejias. Clean shots by uh, Marvin Hagler. When Obel stayed on those ropes, he was inviting it, and Hagler knows how to take advantage when he's got a man in trouble. And he just went right to work, and as you saw, Oval Mejias just could not get up. Marvin Hagler from Newark, New Jersey, now living in Brockton, Massachusetts, taking out Fulgencio over the Hias, the official time, two minutes, 25 seconds of round five, and he did it with the right hook on the jaw. And every kind of punch that you can think of in the arsenal of a boxer uh, before that hook. I think uh, Obel was just about knocked out when he got into that broke stance and wouldn't get off. Let's watch it and watch, count the punches as Hagler it just accumulates. Just one after the other after the other. Obel backing off. Oh, that was a devastating hook. Devastating right hook. Caught him going back off balance right on the point of the chin and he is out. So next for Marvin Hagler to uh, see what the decision is from Sugar Ray Leonard at the press conference in Baltimore next Tuesday. All right, Marvin, you mentioned earlier you feel at that press conference in Baltimore, you feel that Sugar Ray Leonard will announce his retirement, but then some six, seven months later, you look for Leonard to uh, come out of retirement. What then would be next? for well, you if Leonard does do what you think he will. Right now I'm just going to basically concentrate on my own division which I worked so hard to get on top and I'm going to take on the, the Frankie, the Animal Fletchers and the, uh, and the Simpson, whatever. Uh, I'm not going to wait for that big payday which might not ever come, you know, by that time I think I have gray hair <laughs> <laughs> and whatever, but uh, on two sides of it. I really like to see uh, Sugar Ray uh, come out and fight me. Uh, because I feel as though, like I always did, it would be the fight of the century. And on second hand, i like to see him do something other than any other black person in our race have done, retire with all the great pride and admiration that he deserves. How do you feel about, uh, you know, we have a good barn burner fight coming up on the 20th. Uh, we've got this young kid, Chez, fighting a guy that you had a lot of trouble with. Mustafa Ham show gave you 10 rounds of all you could take. Uh, how would you feel about the winner of that fight? Oh, I'm hoping to be here to watch that fight because I feel it's going to be a very exciting fight. They both have almost the same type of style. It should be very interesting to the public. How would you like to fight either one of them? Well, I've already went through Mustafa. I don't think he wants to come back this way. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was a brawl. Marvin, thank you very much for it's spending time with us. my pleasure, and thank you for NBC for inviting me here. Okay, the marvelous one, Marvin Hagler and NBC Sports Special. Can is Pennsylvania Dutch country, where the horse and buggy mode of transportation is still in evidence. And we are at the Americana Host Farm Resort, and we're getting set for boxing. Hi, everybody.